You know, when I was a kid, I loved jumping ramps on my bike, but I got hurt a lot. So I always had trouble judging the, uh, the actual speed versus the height and the, the distance. A different kind of mobility has taken off these days because we love and we demand our wireless access. In fact, demand for 802.11ac Wave 2 wireless access points is accelerating because it is so incredibly fast. At a published rating of 6.8 gigabits per second, these are now faster than the network cables that they depend on. Now, in reality, they'll be looking for 2 to 4 gigabits on the physical interface, but that's still a bottleneck when you talk about the access switches that are maxed out at 1 gig. So what do we need to do, deploy 10 gig switches? That's quite a jump when you consider all the new cabling you would need. Because what is it, three to 500 bucks per drop to rerun cable? Well, that's gonna add up quick, hundreds of thousands of dollars a quick. All to support faster access points than those demanding users. It was bound to happen. I mean, just look at the cycles. Wireless is upgraded every um, three to four years. Switches tend to stick around another four to six years. Cabling, well, that's a 15 to 20 year upgrade cycle if it ever gets upgraded. Meals cabling investments are made well before the walls even go up, so you're most certainly running Cat 5e or Cat 6 these days, which means you're maxed out at one gig. With 1,000 base T on 100 meters of structured cabling, this stuff's probably gonna be here until the walls are torn down. You know, even if you do work it into the budget, I mean, let's be honest about the business disruption. Some of you guys are in industries that aren't even allowed to open the ceilings again. So how did this happen? Well, Ethernet advances have always come in at 10 times the performance for three times the initial cost. So 10, 100, 1,000 base T, those have all been relatively easy jumps to make. But now we're staring at 10,000 or 10 G base T? <laughs> well, long jumps need bridges. No, not a network bridge, I was being metaphorical. One is not enough. 10 is too much right now. We need something in between that could still use those existing cables. Well, the InBase T Alliance has been working on this, building the ecosystem and the consensus that we need for 2.5 and 5 G-Base T Ethernet standard. And it makes a lot of sense. It can save us a ton of money, but how's it all done? Well, it's the frequency, Kenneth. We can always increase speed by increasing the frequency, but only to a point. Higher frequencies generate more noise, or EMI, electromagnetic interference. This is why our cabling is both shielded and twisted. Tighter twists and better shielding are required for the higher frequencies that accompany each increase in bandwidth. So for a given distance, 100 meters for Ethernet, you want the minimum frequency needed to hit your rated bandwidth. Well, the engineers working within the InBase T Alliance figured out how we could do this for real. And they found more room to play with than the full 100 megahertz that Cat5e can handle and increased the code density to get us up to 2.5 gig. Then moving up to 200 megahertz gives 5 gig inside the Cat6 limits. And then, well, 10G uses 400 megahertz, so that's still gonna be on your Cat 6A cable. Well, this is not theoretical stuff. You can do this right now with Cisco Catalyst multi-gigabit switches. These will automatically select the maximum link speed for you, supporting both the 1 and 10 g base t standards, along with the N-Base-T Alliance specs for 2.5 and 5. And all of this from the same PoE switch port, be it uh, PoE, PoE Plus, or even Universal PoE. So unless you're cabling a new building or doing some substantial remodeling, don't stress too much about trying to make that big jump. Upgrade a switch, don't buy a new building, because we live in a mobile world and that mobility demands multi-gigabit access that won't slow it down.